and welcome to another video tutorial. My name is Britta Swiderski and today I'm over on the Simon Says Stamp blog making a card featuring neon inks and a new lawn fawn line. And I really wanted to play around with mixing some of these fabulous patterns from Daphne's Closet with the Hero Arts neon inks. So I picked out this pattern right here, this green one, because I think it'll go really well with our stamping. Since our stamping will be a little bit more bold, this will actually end up reading as a solid, so it won't be too overwhelming. But if you wanted to go with one of the more bold patterns, you could do a more subtle stamping, and that would be a really great way to still incorporate both. So I'm actually going to just keep this in mind while I'm working on it. This is from the Daphne's Closet collection, by the way. Um, it's one of their brand new coll collections. And also they have this background stamp set called Sharp Backdrops. And this coordinates wonderfully with their new lines, especially Daphne's Closet. So I'm going to go ahead and start stamping this. Since this is vertical, you know, the triangles are going vertical here. And I think I want to keep it that way. Yeah. I think I want to keep it that way. I'm going to stamp this horizontally and I'm going to use the blue Hero Arts neon ink which are my current favorite obsession of inks because they're just so much fun and they're so bright. So I'm just going to start at the bottom here and by starting at the bottom this gives me a really clear way to see that my edges are straight and everything like that. So I'm just going to do the first couple rows of this. I don't have to go up very far because um, some of it, this will be covered with pattern paper. Um, but yeah, just use the neon ink all the way up. So now that I have my background stamped, I just cut down this piece to be the same width as this, which happens to be a little bit under four inches, so about three and seven eighths by this top piece is two inches. So I think I'll add these to my card base, and I, this is the poppy color from Hero Arts. And then I'm just going to use my little card base itself to help me line this up. So I'm going to line up the bottom how I want it, and then just line up the top how I want it. And then when that is all ready, you can press down. And this just ensures that you have it as square and as straight as your eyeball sees it. And as this kind of goes on, I think I'm changing my mind. I think I want it to be a horizontal card, which doesn't really affect anything that I've done so far. But I think I'm going to actually define this line right here with some ribbon. So I think I'm just going to cut it. And I don't think I'm going to do a bow. I don't know, we'll see. So far, every idea that I've had about this card has changed as I've seen it in action. Sometimes cards are just like that. It's kind of funny how that works out. Um, so this is Hero Hue's ribbon in the pool color. And I just absolutely love this ribbon having it around because it matches all of my cardstock. And we were going to use some of this adhesive on the front part of the ribbon. Just make sure it doesn't show on the edge. And then kind of line it up. Yeah, I want it like this. So I'm going to use some foam adhesive to pop this up. And so now that I have my card adhered to my little base here, I can work on my sentiment. I want to use this die set and stamps from Lawn Fawn. These are brand new. This is actually the first time that I've used them. I just ran the whole set of alphabet through my die cutting machine. You can totally cut these apart, which is why I have them labeled with Sharpie. Um, Lawn Fawn shows you how to do this on their blog, but it's just so that you can tell when things are right side up and when they're not. But I have kept them together so far, and I think I'm just going to do, I think I'm going to do moi, like the sound that a kiss makes. So I'll pick out those letters, and an exclamation point, of course. And then I have the rest of the letters for another sentiment, if I wish. And then, it's pretty simple to line these up. All you have to do is grab your block and mount your, scent or your letter onto your block. Get your letter. And then, I think I'll use some Memento Black ink for this. Ink up your letter and then you just look through on top of the die cut 
and you should be able to line up the letter pretty easily. You just pop it off and there you go. So I'm just going to go ahead and stamp the rest of these out. Now I have my letters and I also die cut this shape. It's called the Vertical Greetings 2 from My Favorite Things. This is a really great die. Out of some heavy vellum. This is from Basil and it's their heaviest vellum. I think I want to say 40 pounds. Um, but it's just, I've been using it like crazy lately because I just love the thick vellum and using it behind a sentiment is a perfect way to able, be able to have a sentiment and um, still see the pattern through. So when you do a really cool background technique or you do some really awesome neon stamping, um, you can still see behind your sentiment. So I'm just going to adhere these on with my Zig glue pen. I have my letters adhered down and I'm going to use this cool tack adhesive which is a clear foam adhesive to add some dimension behind the letters so it does take a little bit of a trick when you place it I like to use my nonstick craft scissors and kind of cut it apart and then you can just use it and put it you know, spread it out as much as you can over the letters and it will raise the vellum off just enough without um, kind of ruining the effect of the clear vellum. So now you can see I have the adhesive on the back and I can just go ahead, find where I want to put my sentiment and then press down and it magically floats above the surface, which is awesome. It doesn't even matter that the sides really aren't supported because it's the illusion of vellum. It doesn't need to be supported from all sides. We're almost done, but I think I want to add one more thing, which is some gemstones across the bottom here. And that'll really help ground the sentiment. I think I want to use these medium sized ones and just kind of scatter them across here. So I'll start from the middle and then work out with just the ones that I have here on this card so I don't have to open up another package. So there we have our gemstones adhered and that adds a really nice basis for our very geometric card. And so I hope you enjoyed working with the neon inks today. I think the neon blue actually matches the Daphne's Closet collection perfectly. So that's a really great combination. And then the other Lawn Fawn line um, has a lot of yellows and pinks in it. I think it would go really well with the orange and the yellow. Um, and also the green neon inks would go all really well with this collection. So if you're looking to mix in your neon inks into some of your pattern paper collections, that's definitely a way to try. Um, and I think just mixing patterns is really fun. It's kind of a challenge because it's not necessarily the first thing that you'd go to. But definitely give it a try if you are looking for a challenge because it's a lot of fun. So thank you so much for watching this video tutorial. For more information, you can go to the Simon Says Stamp blog. From me, you can go to my website at brittaswiderski.com. Thanks so much, Simon, for having me on the blog today. And I will see you again next time on another video tutorial.